This is the Serbia we've been hoping to find. We came to Novi Sad to get an authentic taste of life outside the big city, and that's exactly what we got. We could get really used to this. We've been in Novi Sad for a month and we've been totally spoiled. We came here to spend our summer the same way that Serbians do. That means enjoying the cafe culture in a beautiful historic center. It means getting out into the countryside to spend an afternoon at a farm and taking a look at the gorgeous historic monasteries that are throughout the region. So normally it's a little challenging as an international tourist to get an authentic slice of the local culture. Often we just get the package versions that all the other tourists get. So with this trip to Novi Sad, we were looking for something a little more local. We actually had a pretty long list of all the things that we wanted to do while we were here. And after our month in Belgrade, we knew that our budget would go fairly far. But what would it all add up to? Well, we're at the end of our month here. So this is a time when we take a look back at all of our experiences in the city and we put a price tag on it. How much did we spend and what did we get for it? But first, a big hello from Novi Sad and welcome back. So if you're new around here, I'm Stephanie, this is Jillian. We retired early to travel full time and we want to inspire you to do the same. So let's start things off with our apartment, which is always the biggest ticket item in our budget. When we look for an Airbnb, we're looking for a place where we can be really comfortable for a whole month. Since we're slow travelers, we want to feel at home no matter where we are in the world. To be honest, when we first started looking at the listings, there was much less to choose from compared to Belgrade. And when we arrived, we realized that this is because it's peak holiday season. Lots of people from across the country are coming to Novi Sad right now to enjoy all the same things that we are. But we did land a pretty nice apartment in the end, so let's go inside and see how we did. We feel that we got a lot right with this Airbnb. First off, it's light, it's bright, everything is brand new. The interior is great. It's pretty minimal, no clutter. It's stylish with lots of cute art on the walls. We love the big windows and having a little balcony for enjoying our morning coffee. We also love how spacious it is. It's about twice the size of our place in Belgrade. The kitchen's fully equipped and we enjoy having both a dishwasher and a washing machine. Especially me, I love that dishwasher. And the location is amazing. We're right in the historic center of the city, just minutes from the pedestrian area with all the main sites. We're literally in front of the green market, so it's really easy to pick up any groceries we need. So that's where we've been staying for the month, but what have we been up to all this time for entertainment? We found that there was lots to keep us busy around the city. There's the historic center, which is great for walking around and taking in the lovely architecture. We also made our way to Petroveradin Fortress for great view of the city. And we took a lot of long walks, which were the perfect training for our upcoming hike in Albania. And you can find out all about that in next week's episode. I also popped into the Vojvodina Museum, which gives a very, very thorough history of the region. This one is best for the real history buffs, although you do need to hunt around for those English translations. Now we're here in Novi Sad to enjoy the city, but for us, the main event was really to explore the surrounding region. We had a long list of excursions that we wanted to make, but we had to figure out which of the experiences would be worthwhile and which ones are tourist traps. It's never that easy to plan our time as independent travelers when we're totally new to an area. Yeah, that's right. So we researched, we consulted a lot of resources to plan our excursions. We're talking Google Maps, blogs, blogs, customer reviews. We even used a good old fashioned paper <laughs> map. It took a little effort, but we were really happy with our final itinerary. So we rented a car for a few days and this turned out to be our only transportation cost aside from our transfer to get here from Belgrade. But having that car really gave us the freedom that we wanted to explore. We went to the town of Subotica, which is in the north of Serbia, right by Hungary. And it's famous for its wonderful collection of Art Nouveau buildings. We're really close to Fushkagora National Park here, which is great for hiking and visiting monasteries and eating really authentic farmhouse meals. Yeah. 
So we went hiking through the park and got to explore some of the dozens of monasteries that are just dotted throughout the region. But our favorite excursion had to be the one where we combined all our favorite activities into one day. We hiked our way through the forest and the vineyards to the lovely Rakovac Monastery. Then we hiked all the way back and capped the experience with an unforgettable afternoon at a winery. We sampled lots of rakia and wine in a cellar that our host had actually built himself. And then we followed this up with a true farm to table feast. As usual, our meals out have been a real highlight of our time here. So back in Belgrade, we tasted a lot of the classics and the street food that's just so popular here in Serbia. Of course, while we were in Novi Sad, we still had to sample the classic shivapi with Shopska salad combination, but we definitely tried to expand our range a lot further. We went to our neighborhood eatery for their breakfast buffet every single weekend, and that was a great way to try a lot of traditional home cooking. Both the quality and the price were just amazing. Another favorite of ours was Veliki Cafe where we enjoyed lots of local food, stews, salads, everything was really fresh. And let's not forget dessert, it's summertime so of course we had to sample some ice cream. Nothing wrong with a little tiramisu ice cream on a hot afternoon. Mm. Now we don't just want to dine out when we're traveling, we love having home cooked meals, especially when we have such a nice kitchen to work in. And all the groceries that we need have been just outside our door. Of course, there's the green market where the produce is so abundant. It's amazing quality and cheap, but there are also lots of butchers and bakeries and fish stores right there too. And even though I hardly speak any Serbian beyond the niceties, I felt pretty comfortable getting the shopping done. So a lot of international tourists make Novi Sad and the whole of Vojvodina region a day trip from Belgrade. And there's definitely plenty of tours that will give you a taster, but we really felt it was worthwhile to spend longer, to take the time to discover this beautiful region and everything it has to offer, just like the locals do. So that's everything we enjoyed this past month in Novi Sad. Now let's tally the final bill. Our Airbnb, just minutes from the historic center, came to 1100 US dollars. Transportation was less than 200, which included a three day car rental and our transfer from Belgrade. Entertainment was just a couple bucks, really barely worth mentioning. Dining out every couple of days cost us just $350, and that included our beautiful meal at the winery. And groceries came in at 465 US. So a full month here in the beautiful city of Novi Sad set us back a grand total of just under $2,100. Now, if you thought that's pretty reasonable for a month of whining and dining and sightseeing in Europe, you should see what we spent in Belgrade. We went to Belgrade hoping to find a low cost version of Europe. We stayed right in the center of the city. We dined out basically every day and we took in all the sites. So you can find out how much it all cost in the next video right here.